Hey folks, now we're going to look at clauses. We've, we've already looked at phrases and now we're going to put those together to make clauses. This is also in chapter 3 of the book. So there are several different patterns for clauses. The intransitive, the copular, uh, monotransitive, ditransitive, and then complex transitive. And we're going to look at uh, those in more detail in the book. And I also want you to think about something. Um, I was just uh, looking at some other grammar materials. As we're going through all of these things, I want you to think, what are you comfortable with sharing with students? And I think this really depends on, on the, the, the objectives that the students have, as well as their age and the kind of class you'll be working in. You know, what, we're learning these things because we need to be able to be masters of grammar. But I also want you to start thinking about what do you actually what meta language do you want to share with students? Just some food for thought. Okay, the elements of clauses are phrases. Remember we talked about those, and they serve the specific syntactic or sentence level roles. So a subject is typically a noun phrase, and it's the most important uh, part of the act, uh, the participant in whatever's going on in that in the clause. And it can be a topic, an entity, or something like that. Typically in English, it's going to go before the verb phrase, uh, unless you're dealing with Yoda. But for most of it, it's going to be before the verb phrase. And it also determines the singularity or plurality of the verb. Uh, something called the long verb phrase, which had at one point been called the predicate. Uh, and that's sort of the verb as well as everything that goes after it, uh, the well, the auxiliaries, the objects, predicatives, and adverbials. But what we're looking at when we talk about a verb phrase, as we mentioned earlier, is it's, it's the main action that's going on, and it really controls a lot about what will be in that clause. After your verb, you may have an object. Again, that's going to be a noun phrase, usually following the verb. Uh, it, it can only be with transitive verbs, um, and it can be an object pronoun. Um, and there are direct objects, as well as, for ditransitive verbs, indirect objects. So, the direct objects follow the verb immediately, and it really, the, in terms of meaning, it's showing what's being affected by that verb or what what is what's what's being done uh, I would say and then there's the indirect object uh, which often will come after the ditransitive verb but before the direct object as in the example here I cooked the kids dinner it means dinner was what was being cooked um, and uh, but sometimes it can be convert it into a prepositional phrase, and typically then it's going to go after the direct object. So I cook dinner for the kids. And it's usually people or some, some other uh, noun that is receiving or benefiting from the ac action. This predicative, uh, and that's where it can be an adjective phrase, a noun phrase, or a prepositional phrase. And we have two different kinds of predicatives, subject predicative and object predicative. The subject predicative is going to describe the subject noun phrase. Uh, and it immediately follows the verb. And it's typically uh, a verb such as the verb to be. Um, and they're called copular verbs. The object predicative is actually describing, rather than the subject, the object, and it follows the direct object. And some common verbs that are they're called complex transitive verbs, and some common ones are make, find, consider, I get, I can't get this open. Adverbials, uh, we have two kinds, the obligatory ones or the optional ones. Um, and there are some verbs which require adverbials to complete the meaning. Otherwise, you're sort of, in terms of meaning, you're left hanging. 
uh, such as your toast is. Well, that's very existential, but typically you're going to say something. Your toast is burnt, your toast is on the table, something. Okay. Uh, and the optional adverbials are just extra information, but the sentence could or the clause could uh, be complete without it. Now, we have a, a series of other uh, elements in clauses that are more peripheral. Um, and, and it's essentially they're not part of the main idea of the sentence, but they're still very commonly used. A lot of this goes on, especially in spoken language. Conjunctions, um, and sometimes they're necessary, but it, it, at the clause level, you could have like this example. And of course, now Kelly doesn't have any teeth. Poor Kelly. Uh, things that are set off by parentheses or dashes where you're adding extra information, that's called parenthetical. Prefaces, uh, where, and again, this is much more common in spoken language. You, you state the subject, but then you add another subject, usually a pronoun, uh, as part of the sentence. Tags are another uh, peripheral element. She's so generous, isn't she? and inserts. Hello, is that Cindy Jones? Things like that. And there are vocatives, which is when you, you use someone's name. And uh, again, it's very common in dialogue and in spoken language. Well, so these are some of the issues about clause elements and clause patterns. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions.